Hello and welcome. My name is Casey Brown, assistant coach here at Boston University. Today's topic is going to be coaching in the game. Coaching in the game is a critical aspect of our players and teams development, particularly at elite levels. Now we spend a lot of time making awesome drills, different technical aspects of the game that we bring out. Now it's time to take that one step further and turn technical training into game translation. Today we will point out three stoppages that incorporate technical areas that we train within slices of the game. Very simply, you can play 8v8 or 9v9. Right here we have a game where yellow is attacking to the big goal and we have greens defending attacking two wide dribble goals. Now I know the kids love to play and that's usually their favorite time of practice. By all means, let them play. But what we want to encourage here is just a few different details that we can bring out that happen in our technical training so they can see the translation to the bigger game itself. This is certainly one nuance to pick out that might be more applicable for your midfielders. But here we want to encourage that we do in technical training the importance of footwork and sometimes a simple backup or negative couple steps in fact creates a new pocket and space to be played into. What you want to encourage here is not only that footwork, but from the passer and the importance of which foot they play. Again, this is going to help us solve pressure and switch the point, and most importantly, do it at speed. So as we look at different advantages in how to train these elite athletes, these elite soccer players, every little nuance and detail such as this, you can see the actual impact within a game. Here we see the midfielder find success by backing out, playing their lead foot, and in two touches, switching the point of the attack. Great efficiency and speed of play. Another slice of the game that we work in our technical training is the angle of our first touch. Here, more applicable for our forward players who check back to goal and close to the sideline, we want to encourage that player to take their touch away at an angle back into the field. Oftentimes, we see our players take a touch square and back to their own goal, where they find themselves either in a double team or very close to the sideline and then out of bounds. So many times at technical training, we encourage our players to take their first touch away at an angle in order to solve pressure more efficiently. Finally, they're able to see the application to the real game. It's not always gonna be perfect, but keep with it, stay positive, let them try it again, and eventually they'll find success, and then you see we're able to again switch the point and build up as a team. Here we have a moment where we have a player attacking from the middle third entering the final third, where she had attempted a one-two or give-and-go pass. Nothing wrong with this situation, but again, we want to encourage how can we take more. This player does a better job of attacking at the defender, driving at them, finding it with their front foot, and then being played in behind. A great use of the front-footed pass here that we encourage a lot in technical training that certainly helps with speed of play and efficiency. In stride, she's able to pass and get it right back. But sometimes the difference of one yard and really attacking that player is exactly the result of eliminating that player. Players want to know, well, what does this mean? Why did we do that, coach? Don't just tell them, show them. Hopefully you found today's tips useful, and we'll see you back next time. I'm Casey Brown with Boston University Women's Soccer.